In the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Joshua T asks us, what were all those metal things you see on the beaches in pictures of the Omaha landing? Now, just before we get into answering that question, I do want to say that this video is made possible by the free-to-play action game Crossout. Check out the game through the link in the description below, and you can start with three extra weapons or a vehicle cabin, and that's just for registering. <laughs> The Normandy invasions represented one of the single largest military maneuvers in history. They began on June 6, 1944, with D-Day, and it's the single largest amphibious assault of all time, and involved what basically amounted to the collective military might of a large percentage of the nations in the world, working all in tandem to defeat the Nazi war machine. One of the most iconic images of the invasion was that of a French beach covered in oppressive-looking metal crosses. As it turned out, those crosses were merely a small part of an expansive network of sophisticated defenses that the Allies managed to somehow circumvent in mere hours. Dubbed the Atlantic Wall and constructed under the direct orders of Adolf Hitler himself in his Directive 40, the formidable defenses stretched an astounding 2,000 miles along the European coast. Intended to ward off an Allied invasion, the Atlantic Wall consisted of endless batteries of guns, an estimated 5 million mines of both the sea and land variety, and many thousands of soldiers who occupied heavily fortified bunkers and fortresses all along its length. The wall has been described as a three-tier system of fortifications, where the most valuable and vulnerable locations were the most heavily fortified, while positions of lesser importance became known as resistance points, but would still pose an imposing obstacle to any invading force. In a rush to create defenses, gun batteries were haphazardly thrown together, consisting of basically whatever the Nazis could get their hands on. As a result, everything from heavy machine guns to massive cannons cut from captured French warships were utilized in the construction of fortresses and bunkers. Though they looked threatening, this confusing mixture of sizes and calibers proved to be an issue for the Nazis when they couldn't scrape together the ammunition to arm all of them. Still, the guns, in combination with several other layers of defenses were believed to make the coast of Europe impregnable. The largest of these guns represented the first line of defense of the Atlantic Wall, and the Germans spent countless hours practice shelling designated killing zones where experts predicted the Allied ships would most likely invade from. After this were expensive submarine nets and magnetic mines chained to the ocean floor to deter submarines and ships. In shallower water, the Nazis attached mines to sticks and buried large logs deep in the sand pointed outwards towards the ocean. The idea being that boats would either be taken out by the mines or have their bows broken against the poles. After this was a defensive emplacement known as the Belgian Gate. These were large heavy fences attached to steel rollers that could be positioned in the shallows. Following this were millions of mines lying just below the sand waiting for soldiers who managed to make it ashore to step on them. Along with all of this, there were also those metal cross thingies, or to give them their proper name, Czech Hedgehogs. As the name suggests, the Czech Hedgehogs Hedgehog was invented in Czechoslovakia and was mostly designed to serve as a deterrent for tanks and other armored vehicles, as well as in this particular case, if the tide was right, approaching ships attempting to land on the shore. Originally designed to sit along the Czechoslovakia-Germany border as part of a massive fortification effort conducted in the 1930s, the hedgehogs never ended up serving their original purpose when the region was annexed by Germany in 1938. It's reported that Czechs originally wanted to build a large wall between the two countries, but a cheaper solution was found in the form of these hedgehogs, which could be mass-produced by simply bolting together beams of steel. So what purpose did they serve? Well, to put simply, if a tank or other such vehicle tried to drive over one, the result was inevitably that it would become stuck on the thing, and even in some cases have the bottom of the tank pierced by the hedgehog. When used on a beach like this, as previously alluded to, they also had the potential to pierce the hulls of ships approaching the shores if the tide was high. On top of that, particularly, the anchored variety of hedgehogs proved difficult to move quickly, as even massive explosions didn't really do much of anything to them. Speaking of anchored hedgehogs, it isn't strictly necessary for the hedgehogs to be anchored to anything normally. It turns out that tanks trying to drive over the unanchored one 
ones had a good chance of getting themselves stuck just the same. In these cases, what would usually happen was that the hedgehog would roll slightly as the tank tried to power its way over it, with then the weight of the tank often causing the steel eye beams to pierce the bottom of the tank, completely immobilizing it. In fact, in testing, the unanchored hedgehogs turned out to be more effective than the anchored variety against heavy vehicles. However, because of the tide issue in this case, to keep the hedgehogs in place, those closest to the water did have thick concrete bases, anchoring them in the sand. Using about a million tons of steel and about 17 million cubic meters of concrete, the broken wall these Czech hedgehogs created was a much more viable option than trying to create a solid wall over such a span, while also not giving the enemy forces too much cover as a more solid wall would do. That said, while initially a deterrent, the hedgehogs ended up helping the Allies after the beaches were secured. Indeed, they proved to be a valuable source of steel and concrete that was repurposed for the war effort. For example, almost immediately, some of the steel beams were welded to tanks, turning them into very effective mobile battering rams. Yes, indeed, the Allies cut up dedicated anti-tank fortifications and welded them to their tanks to make them even more badass weapons. The Soviets also made extensive use of Czech hedgehogs, often using the concrete to literally cement them in place in cities and along bridges to halt German armored divisions in their tracks. As you can imagine, just having one of these things in a narrow street proved to be an extremely effective barrier. While some of these Czech hedgehogs were constructed to specific factory specifications, which stipulated exact measurements, about 1.4 meters in height and materials, anything sturdy enough to survive around 500 tons of force, most were just made of scavenged materials. In the end, the hedgehogs, along with the countless other fortifications, proved to be a formidable but not impassable obstacle for the Allies. In fact, thanks to a massive concerted bombardment effort from the naval and air-based forces of the Allies, strategic commando strikes, and the bravery of hundreds of thousands of troops who physically stormed the beaches all those years ago, all of the defenses were bypassed in just a matter of hours. Though, of course, the cost was thousands of lives on D-Day alone. Now, if you think that you've got the chops to create vehicles for battle that could outperform anything thrown at them, well, why not test that out with today's sponsor, Crossout? Crossout is an online vehicle action game set in a post-apocalyptic future. Basically, what you do is you construct your own crazy vehicle from the ground up with all sorts of different parts. It's a super fast-paced action game with lots of different game modes, and you've got pretty much limitless freedom to create, and what you do to your vehicle is entirely up to you. Join us on the battlefield for free, using the link in the description below and going through that link not only helps support this show but also gives you a free starter set with three extra weapons or a vehicle cabin all as just a bonus for registering thanks to cross out for the sponsorship and now a quick bonus fact Czech hedgehogs are near identical in design, save for their massive size, to caltrops, a tiny metal device designed to always land with a jagged spike pointed straight into the air and used extensively throughout history to hinder advancing enemy. Indeed, these are particularly effective against horses, camels, and elephants, but more so against foot soldiers. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up below. Don't forget to check out today's sponsor in the description box below. And as always, Thank you for watching.